Hi guys, and welcome to the Ace Tanker for the T28 Heavy Tank Concept. Uh, this is the second of the reward tanks you can get for completing personal missions, and I think it's okay. I think it's okay. It's a little bit situational. Um, I think it's not slow, but it's just slow enough to be frustrating now and again. Um, I think the armor can be very, very good, but again, the armor can be very, very troll, and sometimes the armor is quite frustrating. We'll get into that in a moment. Uh, the gun. Uh, a lot of people say the gun is terrible on this tank. I think the gun is actually okay, but yes, once again, depending on the matchmaking, the gun can be a little bit frustrating on the uh, tank as well. But it is the first American TD that has premium features and that you can train up other American TD crews in the tank and that's something that's been sorely missed in World of Tanks for a long long time so uh, I have been playing the tank I try to play it at least once every play session because I've now because this tank is in the game I've now started going up the American TD lines again but due to the fact I just don't have enough crews for American tanks but uh, T28 Heavy tank concept is helping out with that. It's helped me train up my new American TD crews. Now I've said in the past that sometime in the future I'm going to get around to actually doing reviews for the reward tanks, but in the meantime let's pop into Tanks GG. So taking a quick look at the stats for this tank, I think the tank is pretty much average all round. Uh, there are very few things it's bad at and there are very few things it's good at. Um, I mean the gun, the DPM on the gun, the gun gets a lot of criticism, um, but the DPM is actually okay. Most of the the criticism leveled at the gun is to, due to its accuracy and its penetration. It gets 101 or 181 millimeters of penetration. Now that is not great for a tier 7 TD, but it's not bad. And when you put it into context, I'm also currently grinding the T25-2, and that only has 160 millimeters of penetration, even though it's an, another American tier 7 tank destroyer that also sees tier 9. So. 181 millimeters of penetration, not bad. It's going to struggle against some higher tier tanks though. The alpha damage is okay. Um, 320 alpha damage means you can get high rolls, you can get some very low rolls as well, but I think the alpha damage on the gun is okay. The rate of fire, not terrible, not brilliant, but not terrible, 6.26. Uh, the reload time, uh, again, it could be a little bit better. I wished it was a little bit better, but it's not bad. It's workable, and again, you can put on equipment and crew skills to improve that. Um, it's a 105 millimeter gun. I should have mentioned that at the very start. It is a 105 millimeter gun. Uh, the shell velocity is not great. It's a little bit derpy, but uh, yeah, you do get a lot of ammunition. Uh, the aim time, again, uh, nothing special here. It's not terrible aim time, but it's not great. Um, I suppose one nice thing about this tank is because it's quite slow. It's not as slow as you think it is, but it is quite slow. Uh, that makes it like a lot of slow tanks good at shooting on the move. So really, you're going to be doing some shooting on the move. You're going to be playing it maybe a little bit more aggressively because it's an armored uh, tank destroyer. Um, and as a result, the aim time doesn't really affect me that much. The accuracy, however, does. Um, I think the accuracy is very, very average on the tank. If you're trying to use this as a sniper, taking shots at long range, sometimes the accuracy is definitely going to be letting you down. However, the gun depression is awful on the tank. It really does have bad gun depression. Four degrees of gun depression, so you're not going to be using this thing on slopes. You want to try and fight on flat ground as much as possible. You've got a very, very good gun traverse, uh, very, very wide gun arc on the tank, so it's easy to keep tanks within your gun arc. Don't have to move the hull of the tank very much. And the speed is surprisingly good for a big heavy tank. I mean, it gets 30 kilometers an hour top speed or 29 kilometers an hour top speed. Um, it does struggle to reach that top speed, but you can reach it if you're on favorable ground. You can reach it if you're going downhill. Uh, the reverse speed is awful. The reverse speed is not very good at 10 kilometers an hour. So this is kind of a tank you point in one direction and then just keep driving and shoot at everything in your way. So when it comes to the stats so far, uh, the gun. Pretty average, not terrible, not great, and the tank's mo uh, mobility, again, very average, not terrible, not as bad as you think it might be, uh, but it's not great either. Um, anything else that's important? The Oh yeah, the hull armor. Hull armor is pretty troll on that, and we're going to go into that very, very quickly in a moment. Uh, view range, once again, very average, 370 meters at tier 7, not great, but not terrible, there's worse. Uh, you probably should try and boost that somehow, um, and anything else here? Oh! 
Ooh, another negative for the tank. Yes, uh, this tank is very, very weak rear armor. As you can see, 50 millimeters here. And you've also got a 20% chance of fire. So shots into your engine uh, are do have a pretty high chance of setting you on fire. Higher than a lot of other tanks. But uh, we're going to take a look at the armor. So the tank is still pretty rare. And as a result, I think the armor can be quite good because you're fighting against a lot of players that don't actually know how to fight a heavy tank concept. Um, when we take a look at the front of the tank, you can see we've got a very, very flat that's actually the upper glacis here. Um, so a lot of players will tend to aim for this because it's flat, they think it's going to be easily penable, and it's some of the thickest armor on the tank. So it's got about 205 millimeters of effective armor going straight for the front flat armor of the tank. The lower glacis is tiny. It is a very, very tiny lower glacis. Um, so you are going to pretty much bounce if anyone's trying to go for your lower glacis. But one thing you need to be aware of is the base of the tank actually extends up and becomes part of the lower glacis and uh, if tanks are kind of shooting up at you or have easy shots in at your lower glacis they can pen you but if they're trying to shoot directly at it even though the armor looks very very poor and very very weak here look at the result 150 millimeters of effective armor and it's a ricochet so angled very very well um, can trick people into shooting at it but uh, yeah I mean basically if you're going to be shooting at the hull of this tank from the front uh, you're doing it wrong and again as I say the armor on this tank only really is good if you you're fighting players who don't know how to fight it. Now the upper plate or the upper hull on this tank is a different story because we go from incredibly good or angled armor to very very weak armor. The strip just above the flat area even though it is angled, look at the angle, even though it is angled it is very very thin and as a result it's only about a hundred millimeters thick all around so uh, this can be easily penned from the front if shots go high they can pen your upper plate even though it looks very very well angled it's only about a hundred millimeters of effective armor however if they miss that and they hit your viewport for once <laughs> a viewport that's very well armored you've got a very very well armored viewport here it's 248 millimeters so even shots at the front of this tank if people are auto aiming they're going to be hitting this and this is incredibly well armored incredibly troll uh, the rest of the upper plate it goes from about 100 millimeters up to about 150 uh, and again tanks can pen this but it does have the opportunity of bouncing now and again um, and then you've got some incredibly troll armor above the tracks you can see how well rounded this is so tanks shooting from the front if they hit your sides this is just an automatic bounce even for higher tier tanks 358 millimeters of that uh, effective armor it's a bounce to both sides I mean it can get up to you can see it getting up to about six seven hundred millimeters of effective armor in places so it's very very troll so if people decide not to go for your hull basically they can go for your turret but if they're going for your turret they're inexperienced and don't know how to take one of these tanks out because the turret is extremely well armored you can see here about 250 millimeters of effective armor to the left and right of the gun mantlet the gun mantlet itself again very very troll Again, there's some areas, I don't know what that was, zero millimeters, don't know. Uh, but you can see some areas of this uh, gun mantlet 400 millimeters 200 millimeters you got 300 millimeters spaced armor on the gun itself so uh, it can be very very troll can absorb shots now there is a weak area to the left and right of this gun mantlet um, however again from the front it's incredibly well angled and therefore very little chance of penning the turret on this tank or at least the, the gun area of this tank it doesn't really have a turret uh, so if you're facing one of these things from the front and you're trying to pen it well, what you need to do there are two weaker areas that are much easier to hit uh, the first are the three cupolas on top of the tank are all terrible and these are hit zones you can pen them so these are only about 60 millimeters of effective armor if you can shoot these just go for them you can easily pen them and you're easily going to damage the tank if it goes hull down you can shoot these and be easily or easily damage it uh, the other major weak spots from the front of the tank are the machine gun turrets now I think Technically, these are called sponsons. Maybe someone could correct me. But uh, these sponsons or machine gun turrets are very, very weak from the front, but you need to hit them flat on. If you hit them flat on, they've only got about 100 millimeters of effective armor. However, if you don't hit them flat and you hit further out to the angles, to where they're sloped you can see that even these have the potential of uh, getting troll bounces so uh, yeah if you're going to check out one of these tanks the best thing to do is go for the 
ports are the uh, cupolas on top or the machine gun ports on either side uh, but hit them flat because as I say they're angled and they can have troll bounces. Now the side armor is the downside to this tank because this tank has very very poor side armor. Uh, once again you've only got about 100 millimeters of side armor. Again it's only going to be effective against lower tier tanks. Uh, there are some areas of uh, stronger armor. You can see you've got an area of about 190 millimeters here, an area of about 190-200 millimeters here. Uh, so if people are auto aiming the side of your tank then they're going to be shooting here and as a result again the side armor can be trolled but lots of guns have more than 100 millimeters of effective armor from the side. I do need to point out again that the tanks on this tank are, are tracks on this tank are considered spaced armor. So once again look at the angles. If you're side scraping and people aren't going for the machine gun port trying to pen the side of your tank it's going to be a ricochet and the tracks do have the opportunity of bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. <laughs> okay maybe they're not going to say absorbed. Um, it is possible for your tracks to absorb shot. Uh, the rear of the tank, however, is absolutely terrible, as is the roof. So if you can get to the rear of one of these things, it is dead. The roof of the tank is absolutely awful. RT are going to absolutely decimate these things, but the roof also comes down over the back of the tank and this is only 33 millimeters of effective armor. It is sloped but it is only 33 millimeters of effective armor. So pretty much any tank this tank can face from tier uh, 5 all the way up to tier 9 can pen this tank with no problems. It only really, the armor only really benefits when you're fighting inexperienced players and uh, these are still pretty rare on the server and a lot of players don't know how to take them out. So let's get back to the game. Um, this was the ace tanker in the T28 heavy tank concept. We're here on Runeberg. Uh, some good players, some good players on our team, uh, but it's not a great matchup. Could be worse, could be better. We're tier 7 in a tier 8 game, uh, but I'm very, very happy it's Runeberg because I like to play my tank destroyers, at least if they're heavily armored, big, slow-moving tank destroyers. I like to play them like heavy tanks. I mentioned that on the AT2 Ace Tanker recently, but uh, I'm going to be playing very aggressively. Um, so I'm heading into town. And you can see the acceleration, we're up to 20 kilometers an hour already, and we're still accelerating. So once the ground is favorable, you can get up to that 29 kilometers an hour top speed very easily. Um, on less favorable ground, it can take a little bit of time, but the tank is slow, but you know, <laughs> there are worse or much slower tanks in the game. So it can be frustrating now and again, but not as frustrating as some other tanks. So yeah, our T29 has decided, oh, I'm gonna hang back. And, I'm saying, nope, I'm not going to hang back. I'm going on the attack. I'm in a big troll tank destroyer with lots of armor if players don't know what they're doing, and a big gun. So uh, we're going to be moving down, and the initial thought was I was going to come to this corner and then start using this amazing gun traverse to start fighting around this corner. But I decide, okay, no one here. No one here. And then I notice an IS-2 has gone around the corner. Um, hasn't spotted me yet, so Lova is hanging back, so let's uh, ambush these tanks. Come up, have to adjust, track the IS-2, he's going nowhere. You can see we did 323 damage there, so just above slightly average roll. This guy moves up, uh, and you can see the angle. Look at the gun arc on this tank. <laughs> I'm extremely well angled, and if this guy was shooting back at me, he's got very, very little to shoot at, so this armor is uh, the thickest armor on the tank and when it's angled like this it is even better. So uh, you can use this tank very effectively around corners. So we track the IS-2 again, we're moving down and we're going to try and finish him off. Uh, someone else kills him, no there goes my kill. I've uh, done all the hard work and someone else nicks the kill but uh, we're moving down and this Lerva again, uh, I'm playing aggressively. Lerva's just taking a shot, coming around at an extreme angle. Look at that bounce. And this guy's showing me his lower glaces, and people criticize the gun on this tank. 181 millimeters of penetration. That's more than enough to go through the lower glaces on the Lerva. And this guy's not interested. <laughs> yeah, the Lerva just gave up trying to shoot me at all. Goes for the tank behind me, and we're able to kill him with our next shot. 
So uh, continuing to advance, a little bit worried about tanks to my right, but most of the enemy tanks have now been spotted on the minimap, so I think I'm pretty safe to the right. We're just continuing to advance, we're continuing to play aggressively, continuing to flank. Shot on the move, as I say, this tank is slow, and a lot of slow tanks are very good at shooting on the move. So we get a shot into the T-32. Now I've mainly been shooting tier 8s, the Lerva and T-32 were tier 8, so when you're shooting higher tier tanks, you get more XP and more credits than you would for shooting a lower tier tank. Uh, so that's one of the reasons I shoot a lot of tier 8s in this game. <laughs> I end up getting a, the ace as a result, I reckon. Uh, I'm, I'm just continuing to move. There is RT in this game. Um, almost every single other enemy tank has now been spotted. So I'm just continuing to advance. And we spot RT. So there's that 370 meters of view range. Now I am using Binox, not uh, coded optics. I didn't need them there. Spotted the M12. Get one shot in. Look at this gun arc. And a second shot. So... 200 or 2.2 uh, second aim time. It, it's workable. It works on the tank. And you'll notice a lot of the shots I've taken so far in this game. I haven't even had to aim fully. Oh, and now we get to start to see the troll armor. So I wanted to flank the tanks up to my right. And I'm still thinking about flanking the tanks to the right. Or to the left, I should say. But there we go. We take out the KV-85. We've got the Ferdy. And I have the side shot, but I figure, no, no, I've got to turn, I've got to angle. Look at these bounces. I've got to deal with these tanks, and this gun arc allows me to swing around, get a shot in on the VK. Now we've just bounced a Dicker Max, so um, the armor can be incredibly troll at distance on this tank, especially when you're fighting against players who don't know what they're doing. I've finally been penned, Dicker Max gets a shot into me. Uh, but I'm advancing. I'm going to try and get into cover behind these buildings. Sh miss my shot on the move. I was talking about how good this tank was at shooting on the move, and I completely messed that one up. But continuing to be aggressive, continuing to move up, take out the T-3485. Um, I'm going to see if we can get any damage or any revenge in on this VK. So we move up and kill him. So there's kill number five, and now I'm getting shot from behind. Dicker Max bounces on my side armor, turning to angle, turn, turning to get a better angle. Um, and again, this is the .38 accuracy. Sometimes if you don't let the gun in fully, or even when you do, the accuracy lets you down. So the accuracy is quite troll. It really is quite troll on this tank. I don't find it terrible, it's not definitely as troll as Russian guns, but it's still pretty troll. So here we go, shooting tier 8s again, get one shot into the T-44, I'm looking for Top Gun. And the reload, the reload is good enough to aim and pick up the kill. So there's Top Gun and the T-28 heavy tank concept. So Dicker Max knows what he's doing, the Dicker Max knows what he's doing. He managed, are oh, the bushes in the way, he managed to pen my machine gun port knows exactly what he's doing. There's the shot there. Um, yeah, if you're going to be shooting this tank for the front, aim for the machine guns. That's how you kill them. Uh, but anyway, there we go. Six kills in the heavy tank concept um, and game is over. So first ace tanker in the T-28 concept and we also picked up a steel wall. A lot of that or there's a lot of the steel walls probably picked up because the tank is still fairly rare. A lot of players don't know how to take them out and they were aiming at some of my strongest armor. But uh, we also picked up a top gun so quite happy with that. We finished top on XP with 1400 or just short of 1400 XP. Did almost 3k, 2.8k damage, 6 kills. Um, and I was quite surprised with the assistance damage. Picked up quite a lot of assistance damage. Um, was tracking some tanks but a lot of that was spotting um, playing it aggressively so um, nice nice assistance damage nice damage 17 shots fired 13 hits the gun can be a little bit troll especially if you're firing it without being aimed but um, other than that I think the gun is gun gets criticized but I think the gun is a little bit better than people say um, 13 hits received and 10 bounces now that's simply just because people don't know how to take out one of these tanks the armor can be incredibly good if someone doesn't know what they're doing, or it can be incredibly bad if they do. Uh, your side armor can be penetrated, you can be penetrated in multiple areas at weak points or weak spots from the front, and the rear of the tank is just awful. But uh, yeah, it's still pretty rare, and people don't know how to kill these things yet. We finished up earning 24,000 credits. Now, I want to draw emphasis to this because this is a reward tank, it's not a premium tank. Premium tanks 
get a credit bonus and this doesn't. This is a reward tank. It gets exactly the same credit making potential as any regular in-game tank, not a premium tank. So you're not going to be earning as much credits in this tank as you would in, say, for example, any other tier 7 premium tank like maybe the AT-15A or the SU-12244. Uh, but it is a reward tank. It will allow you to train up your crews just like a premium tank. You just don't get the uh, credit uh, bonus, but you do, you do get the XP bonus. You can see bonus for premium vehicle tier down here. So you'll get the bonus XP, just not the bonus credits. So we received 2,098 XP overall on the first game of the day, first win of the get day, with a bonus thrown in, which left me on 4,615. Uh, so there you go, first ace tanker in the T28 heavy tank concept. You guys requested a medium tank ace tanker for today. There you go. Hope you're happy. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.